Hi, this is Griff Patch. Welcome to my top-down scrolling game uh, tutorial for Scratch. Uh, we left off here in the Zombie Cubes game with a single enemy who could follow you around, and now we're going to expand that and look at how we can add lots of them. Now, in my Zombie Cube game, there were loads of Zombie Cubes, so you don't really want to have to add them all in by hand, one by one. Um, so the best thing to do is have a list of positions. So we're going to create a list here, and it's going to be for all sprites. That's very important because having it uh, list per zombie cube is not going to work. So we're going to call this mobs, capital letters, so we know it's for everything. Well, this is a term really that came from my use of Minecraft, but it'll it'll do here. So mobs. Okay. There we have our list. But we don't really want to have to enter in the positions by hand either. It'd be nicer to be able to use um, a bit more of an interactive way in the game. So we'll do that. So let's just hide that list for a second. What I'm going to do is have it so that uh, you press a certain key and it will position a mob wherever your mouse is. So you can play the game and you can pop the mobs in as you play it. So let's go into the uh, player scripts for that. Um, and what we'll do is we'll add in an event when key pressed. Uh, let's add it in over here where it's a bit out of the way. Okay, the key we're going to press to add a mob is going to be uh, M. Like this, when M is pressed, then we're going to add to mobs from the lists. And the position we're going to add is going to be operators plus scroll X on the right hand side and then mouse if we go into sensing X. So mouse X plus scroll X and another row is going to be mouse Y plus scroll Y. So every time you press M it's going to add the position of the mouse on the level to mobs. Now if we go into our zombie, we need a way of actually positioning these mobs um, as the game starts up in setup. So let's add a new custom block called setup, run without screen refresh. Okay. And when we call the setup script here, receiver, we're going to actually call this setup now. So I'll, for now I'll just move that X, Y to there. So this is going to be setting up all our mobs. Let's get some fresh space over here. Okay, so all the positions of the mobs is in this list mobs here. So we need to, um, it's called iterate, go through the list and find the positions in that list. So we need a variable, and I'm going to call it i for iterator for this sprite only. Okay, and I'm going to set i. The very beginning let's go with set x y and set i to one and then we're going to have a loop and we're going to repeat until greater than and on the left we're going to have the variable i repeat until i is greater than the length of the list so once i is bigger than the length of the mobs we're going to stop so in here now we're going to have our set x and y this first one is going to be item and then we want the i so item x to item i of mobs which is one to start with then we're going to have a change i by one so it's the next item and then change y set sorry, set y to item i of mobs which is going to be the next number two now of mobs and then we're going to change i again so it's going to go through one by one setting the x and then the y to the position of the mob and then at the last part of the loop we need to make a clone so that we have our next there mob okay this is almost there the only problem we have now is that there's going to be one extra um, mob created. So if there was two mobs, we'd create two clones, but then we still have the original sprite, and we don't really want that. Um, so it'd be useful if we could find a way of 
getting around that problem. Um, so what we're going to do is set i to be 0 at the very end. So the one that isn't a clone will have an i of 0. Now let's see what we can do with that. OK, so when i is 0, we don't want to do anything with the uh, non-clone. So let's have a control if. So in move level, let's only move them when i is bigger than 0, like so. And also, we want to make sure that when we've set up, um, before we call setup, let's set the is visible to false. And let's hide before we call setup. So this means that the, uh, the first one that isn't a clone will have is visible set to false, an i of 0, and which means that is visible is going to be always set to uh, false. And when it comes to moving the enemy, it's going to be false. So it's going to be hidden, and it's not going to try and move anything. And so it's just going to act as if it's never there, which is exactly what I wanted. So right now, if we run this, we've got no enemies at all. So to add an enemy, all we need to do is put the mouse where we want it to be while the game is running and press M like that. Now let's run it again. There he is. And if we want another enemy, let's add one down here. So put your mouse where you want it to be, press M. And I'll do one over here, press M. Now run it. There we go. And how is this working? Do we remember? Let's look in the uh, the list variable now. If we make that visible, the mobs. Have a look what we've got in here. We've now got a list of uh, okay. A list of positions. This is the x. And this is the y. The x. This is the y. So one, two, three. Four mobs according to that. Let's have a look. There's three of them. I must at some point have pressed M. Yes, in fact, there he is, stuck down here. Another one has appeared because at the moment I've got it tied to the M key. Whenever I press M key, it's going to create a mob. Um, so, probably a good idea to delete those rows because I don't want that mob appearing at that position. So, let's delete these top two. You probably haven't got those because you probably didn't press M key, or maybe you did. Let's run that again. Okay, so now hopefully there's no mob down at the bottom. Yeah, there we go, no mob down there, which is what I wanted. So these are the positions that we're creating our mobs. Um, you may have found zombies start get, getting stuck in walls. The problem with the detection of walls in Scratch is that it sometimes doesn't quite work and you end up with a zombie getting stuck in a wall and not being able to move. Um, you might have been having that problem already. So let me show you how to fix that. It's not happening in mine, but it, I'll put it in anyway. So let's do that. So what will happen is um, we have the move enemy in zombie here, and it shows the zombie for the first time just here if it's visible. Now what can happen is it shows it, but it's actually already slightly overlapping a bit of level. Now this can happen just because of um, slight uh, glitches in the positioning or whatever reason. Uh, it shouldn't happen in theory because we only ever let we we only ever let the zombie move if it doesn't touch the mink. But it does happen, especially when there's off-screen um, bits of level which it can't detect or for other reasons. So what we can do is add in an if statement just after the show and before the follow player, and see when we show it whether it's touching a uh, wall already. So we need that touching uh, block. Where is it? Here it is. Just duplicate that so I've got the right color. So if we are touching a green wall, the player, if the zombie, sorry, is touching a green wall, as soon as we show it, which should not happen, but it can happen and it can get stuck in a wall then, we want to try and get him out of a wall. So let's run a new block called uh, escape wall like this. And we shall. Uh, Run without screen refresh, that's fine. OK, 
Okay, so move that escape wall to here. So if when we first show the enemy, we are touching a wall, we want to run this little escape wall routine. So let's put that down here. And all we simply are going to do is try moving him. First of all, we'll move him uh, two pixels to the left. Then we'll try moving him two pixels to the right. And then we'll try moving him two pixels up. And then we'll try moving him two pixels down. So this just wiggles him around. And uh, hopefully that will get him free. So that's it. Um, the main problem is like, so is if a zombie is moving towards you here and he's moving up and down this wall, he suddenly stops moving. And it's because he's got into the wall slightly. But this routine here will just move him back out of the wall again. So it just is a little bit of a precaution to try and stop the zombie getting stuck in walls. And it does tend to work quite well. So that's all great. Uh, what we need to do now is perhaps add in something that actually will mean he can hurt you and uh, restart the level. Uh, but that probably will have to happen in the next tutorial. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and are getting somewhere with this. See you next time.